Just, uh, but uh, Jeannie, Jeannie growing the work that, that we're all committed to. Um, thanks, what a great way to begin the California Bicycle Summit. Um, next I want to introduce Tony Dang, who is the Executive Director of California Walks. Good morning, everyone. So um, Dave asked me to uh, talk about and share some of my reflections as a board member and the sort of uh, strategic planning process that we've gone over uh, the past two years. And I think some of you might be asking, you know, why me? Why this walk advocate, right? Because uh, I think historically, walking advocates and biking advocates haven't really gotten along very much. You know, we're kind of in this like frenemies relationship. And. Uh, but, but I think it's precisely because of that historical context that Dave has asked me to share my reflections because uh, as, a, as a board member, I've, I'm probably the most critical of the organization. Uh, so here I am to, to share some of my reflections. Um, so it's been two years since our last summit. Uh, the last time I was in San Diego. And I, I think for those of you who were there, uh, you might remember that uh, I shared pretty frankly that I felt that um, CalBike was not ready as an organization to tackle issues of equity and social justice, point blank. We were not prepared to have that conversation. And, and so what I can say is that after that summit, I did a lot of reflection. Um, I, I, I never shared this with Dave, but I actually had a crisis of confidence in the organization. Um, I, I, I thought really long and hard about, hard about whether I even wanted to stay involved, right? Um, but to Dave's credit, he has worked very hard uh, to ensure that CalBike as an organization is really meaningfully trying to tackle this issue of equity and, and, and reorienting our organization to be a much better uh, partner and ally to uh, the other organizations in our state doing the hard work on the ground. Um, so I want to share, over the past two years, like Dave mentioned, we've had a lot of really tough conversations. Uh, and uh, in your guys' packet, which uh, Esteban will be talking about, we've crafted um, what I still consider to be kind of a draft uh, of our new vision goals uh, and, 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 and strategic direction for the organization. Uh, it's definitely not perfect. Uh, I will readily admit that I, as an individual, and Calvac as an organization, are still learning. And I want to open it up to all of you to, to really give us feedback, to really strengthen this, right? Because uh, it, it's absolutely meaningless to put something on paper uh, if we're not willing to, to change and adapt to actually meet the needs of the people we're trying to serve. Um, one thing that I really hammered home a few years ago at the last summit was the need for CalBike to really cultivate and sustain new leaders in the field uh, and in this movement. And I think that CalBike has done a really great job uh, doing that over the past two years. Uh, as a board member, I've seen that reflected in our board itself. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Esteban, to Chanel, to Hanoveva, our new board members who have really, I think, reinvigorated our board discussions and, and have really brought this critical perspective uh, to the organization to, to, to shape our, our new direction. Uh, I'm also really happy to, to say that Dave was super uh, supportive and, and willing to, to work with my organization, California Walks, uh, to launch the Walk and Bike Youth Leaders Program. Uh, so there's a table of kids age, I think we have 16 through 23 over there, uh, and they're from all over the state. Uh, and we've been working with them over the summer to teach them the ins and outs of advocacy, of, of walking and biking design. We've taught them how to do walk-bike audits, uh, and they've actually uh, come up with some really great uh, personal reflections through photo voice and video voice projects, which you'll uh, see uh, a little bit of tomorrow. But if you want the, the full peek at all of uh, our youth leaders, there's going to be a session here uh, in this room at 11. So I really encourage you to, to come by and check them out. Um, <laughs> so turning away from CalBike as an organization, I do want to pick up on a couple of things that, that Kate talk, talked about. So um, uh, as you may know, uh, the state passed a huge transportation funding package. And uh, while I agree that it's a huge opportunity, uh, it, it's, 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 it's not 
it's not foregone that it will benefit all Californians equally. So um, while I do want to see Caltrans become the Department of Access, I think it's really important for us advocates in the room to work to ensure that Caltrans becomes the Department of Access and Opportunity. Uh, we as advocates need to uh, push for these flexible state dollars to not just build communities through transportation, but to strengthen our existing communities, to, to lift up their needs with these new dollars. Um, and I think with that, I will hand it over to Stefan. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Um, I, I saw Cynthia Rose, another board member, come in and say, hey, Cynthia. I also see some uh, some veteranos of the untokening uh, that happened in Atlanta. Anyone did the untokening? Raise your hand. So there's a few folks. I was there, uh, a national meeting to create uh, just and equitable communities where there's going to be an untoken in California in the beginning of November. Jim Mulvaney. Oh, hey, Jim. There you are. <laughs> Didn't see you back. Any other board members sneak in? Chanel. Chanel's here. Say hey, Chanel. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, great. Okay, I, I'm going to uh, try to be brief because I could go on and on. I'm a professor in my day job and I, I just could talk forever, so I'm going to try my best to keep this to about 10 minutes. Um, I, I want to talk about our strategic plan and carry on, I think, the way that Tony introduced it, which is absolutely accurate, that it is broadly a process, right? And, and it needs to be activated um, by Calbike, but all of us in California working together to advance the ideas that it's, that it's suggesting and, and ultimately promoting. Um, I want to say that uh, from a board perspective, um, I think we... Uh, took on the deliberative task of strategic planning seriously. Um, I think that there's a lot of excitement about our direction. Um, in terms of process, um, there are 80 stakeholders from different organizations, different folks all around the state, um, some even outside the state, who we spoke with. There were 13 focus groups and 47 participants in those focus groups. So this plan is a process of engagement. It's also a process of discernment, which the board has done, the staff has done together, um, and we're asking for ongoing uh, engagement and discernment, and it's a plan of action. Who are my teachers in the room? Any, any, any teachers, school teachers? Okay, right on, I'm, let's, do a little, let's do a little thing, a little exercise I've done with my students before, so. Um. If you could take out this sheet, okay, which has our, Strategic plan on it. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Um, I'm going to read our new mission aloud. You can read silently to yourself. So, a new strategic plan. Calbike's mission is to advocate for equitable, inclusive, and prosperous communities where bicycling helps to enable all Californians to lead healthy and joyful lives. Pretty good. All right, now we're gonna do the exercise that some of the teachers are experts in here. What we wanna do is we wanna ask you to embody our vision by speaking it. Okay? So what I'm going to do, it's not quite call and response, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, we envision a California before each paragraph, even though it's only written in the person. So I'm going to say, we envision California, and then all together, we're going to read the vision. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to embody it. We're going to use our bodies, the same, one that, same bodies that move through space, right, to enunciate our vision. Okay, so, are you with me? All right, All right. now participatory. <laughs> we envision a California where our public spaces, especially our streets, are safe, appealing, Yeah. Right. 
Division of California, where decisions about transportation are safe. exact right things. It must be taken up. And it can't just be Calpi or certain of us. It's got to be everyone. To take up the work is a process. Second, equity is transformational. Okay, I realize that's kind of a neoliberal word. It's a word that's been used a lot. But, it, but, it, but it, it really matters here. Right? One of the things you'll notice in our strategic plan is that we don't have a special equity piece of it, right? What we've tried to do is weave equity all the way through it, okay? Equity can't just be added on to existing work, right? As though it's a new appendage, okay? It has to change the work from the center of the work. Everything, it has to go undergo a process of reflection and discernment and recommitment and then re-engage that process. Equity work just can't be added on. The additive equity work tokenizes people, it tokenizes projects. This is about changing who we are and what we do to be more responsive and responsible to the truth and the lived experience of our community. So equity is process, equity is transformative, and equity must be held. Think about this thing. If the struggle has to be engaged, and it's transformational, it asks us all to change our work. It's not always easy to hold it, right? Some of us were carrying it, okay? Others haven't really got to touch it yet, right? Because sometimes it's got a lot of spikes around it or a lot of prickly things, you know? Sometimes it really does kind of cut us where it hurts or our access to change things that we're not. We don't really want to change because it works for us. And, and it has to be held, right? It can't be just looked at passively. It has to be taken up. And sometimes it's hard to hold it, but it has to be held. So <coughs> over to Dave Snyder, who's going to talk about our goals. Thank you. Great. So I don't want to take too much time. I'm really proud of our new strategic plan, and I am very optimistic about where we're going to go in the next five years and what we're going to get done. Because I look back at our last strategic plan that we did in 2012. We invited the leaders of the existing bicycle advocacy organizations to Sacramento. We spent a day working through our priorities and coming up with a set of goals, and we nailed them. We nearly doubled, if you count uh, some other bits of money, I think you can say we doubled the active transportation program in the course of those five years. That was our goal, we did it. It is, in fact, the largest such program in the United States. 
but it is nowhere near the largest per capita, I might add. Mm -hmm. The state of Washington, Colorado, Delaware all exceed, uh, to name a few, all exceed California in terms of the amount of money they dedicate to biking and walking uh, from their state budgets. So we are setting as one of our goals in our next strategic plan to uh, increase more the active transportation program to 500 million a year. That's our goal. We're going to do it because we did it last time. <laughs> the other, uh, one of our other big priorities in our last strategic plan was to get uh, protected bike lanes approved. We did it. <laughs> and another was to get the Three Foot uh, First Safety Act passed, and we did that. <laughs> Our next strategic plan is, as Esteban said, uh, very much rooted in this uh, priority of equity. And I want to uh, speak to that for a minute, go through our strategic goals. Uh, real quickly and then uh, get us on to the rest of the summit. Um, the e equity is different than equality, as you know, but I think uh, it's close to that. And one of the key reasons, one of the, the, the foundational principles of our shift toward equity is to address what I think most of us and most Americans might accept is the single biggest problem facing us as a society, which is income inequality, the vast, incredible dis disparate differences and the difficulty that people without resources have in making it uh, and the, how the rich get richer, nevertheless. And in the United States, in a nation founded on slavery in order to create the income for the rich, and which has never dealt with that, and cannot talk about income inequality uh, without talking about racial inequality and racism. And, and so all of our work and every single goal is going to be conscious of, of the importance of equity in terms of uh, in income and, and race to name uh, the two, name two of many uh, areas of inequality. Uh, that's why our first goal is to prioritize low-income communities and communities of color in transportation spending. We're going to win that one. Our second goal is to improve the built environment for biking, walking, and transit. We're going to increase the ATP to $500 million, like I said. Another priority is to win a complete streets policy. I'm, I'm just going to highlight the ones particularly that, that Kate mentioned in, in her speech. We, we talked about complete streets, and, and we all know that we have a long way to go. To, to win uh, complete streets policy at Caltrans that's truly effective. It's one thing to say, yeah, we thought about putting it in a uh, bike lane, but nah, it's not gonna work. Uh, check. Uh, it's another to, to really do it, to really think hard and do it, and, and not do it only if you have a really good reason. It's true, not on every street, but we need our our city officials and Caltrans to take that seriously. So we have a bill that we're uh, introducing next year that will force Caltrans to, to take their complete streets policy much, much more seriously. And the other uh, part of the goal number two on there uh, is about changing design practices. And uh, we are very proud of the work that Caltrans has done so far in helping people understand what it, how you build a, a, a what, what is officially called a separated bikeway and how you can uh, do all kinds of better and improved designs. Um, but that uh, material in the highway design manual and in the California uh, manual and uniform traffic control devices is all kind of scattered and it's not as accessible as it needs to be. And so we want Caltrans to develop the national leading guide on street design for biking and walking. Our third goal is to uh, change our transportation policies. Uh, this is not an infrastructure goal, but a, a policy goal. Uh, things like automated speed enforcement, 
uh, things like getting uh, community bike shops in communities uh, throughout the state where the economy won't support a regular bike shop, but, but where people still need to get their bikes worked on and, and be able to buy affordable bikes. Uh, we should be able to have community bike shops uh, where, everywhere where people can walk to them. Uh, and then, uh, just like uh, last year, just like in our last strategic plan, uh, we recognize that uh, this is a process, like Esteban said, and that our success is going to defend, depend on the strength of all of you in your communities, with your elected officials, with your policymakers, with your neighbors, uh, with, with the people who, who uh, care about your communities. Uh, you need to be strong, and we're going to do what we can and listen to you and, 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 and do what uh, you would uh, like us to do to help strengthen your movement. Uh, we have a number of, of goals to uh, specifically uh, work to strengthen uh, local organizations. One of them uh, that I can share is to get a uh, license plate, uh, a bicycle rights license plate passed, which over the course of five to ten years could raise a million dollars for uh, local community education, outreach, and advocacy. So, uh, and we, I, I gotta give a shout out to David Bodick, who's not here um, at the Department of Public Health, who's, who's working with us on that. So, uh, those are goals. You, uh, if you read through them, you might uh, compare them to the summit program and see that there's a heck of a lot of uh, summit program items that uh, are, uh, that cover various aspects of these goals. I, I encourage you to, to uh, attend as much of this as you can. It's gonna be fantastic. The people in this room are great and the conversations are gonna be great. Uh, that's, part, that's why our theme uh, is connecting uh, people, places, and issues. Uh, I think we've been pretty clear about how we're connecting the issues. Uh, we're going beyond uh, bicycling. Uh, united around what the bicycle can do for our communities. Uh, we're, we're obviously connecting places. There are a number of workshops about how you design the streets to connect the places uh, to where we go. Uh, and we're uh, connecting people. Um, with, with that, I uh, want to uh, acknowledge uh, a person and some people who aren't here right now. Uh, Brian Velez um, of Bike San Gabriel Valley passed away uh, last week, and most of his uh, co-workers are not here. He uh, was the outreach coordinator and a beloved staff person, and uh, he and they are missed, and I'm going to ask for uh, just a moment of silence to acknowledge that. Thanks. As we connect, among each other uh, at this summit. Uh, we should be aware of a few changes in the, in the program, so let me uh, jump into the logistics before uh, I, I thank, thank folks. Uh, the, the event, uh, uh, Women of Color uh, Talk About Transportation is canceled because it was uh, organized by the folks from Bike SGB who uh, can't be here. So that uh, event is canceled, but you are encouraged to attend the Advocacy Open Space Conference Thursday afternoon where you can propose uh, that topic and uh, have some time to have uh, a conversation uh, among women of color in transportation or about women of color in transportation during that period. Uh, that's a highlight that I want to point out, uh, along with a couple of other unusual things that we're doing at this summit that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, the Advocacy Open Space Conference uh, is sometimes called an unconference. We call it open space because I think that's a better title. It is actually a conference, so why call it an unconference? But it is an unusual event. It is, we've set aside five rooms in three time slots on Thursday afternoon 
for us to address issues like how do we have a membership program in our organization, what's the best way to talk to the media, uh, whatever will strengthen us as a movement uh, in terms of advocacy is on the agenda. The first session, which you'll see in the program, is facilitated by an expert in open space conferences. We encourage you to go to that and propose what you want to talk about or what you want to learn. And the facilitator will assign uh, that topic as voted on by on the group, uh, by the group right there. Uh, we'll assign that topic to a session. I'm, I'm uh, really excited about that uh, event. Um, the uh, Bikeway Design Symposium tomorrow afternoon is another unusual event, maybe uh, invented here. Um, it's uh, also over three sessions.